We're gonna whip somebody's ass. That's right. What's up, Jerome's? Uh, it's a beautiful Monday morning. Uh, sun is shining, birds are chirping and shit, and the Vikings are going to mercifully beat down the Niners on Monday night. Just one one time. W one time, man. But uh, we got some randomness uh, to go through, uh, so let's dive on in. Uh, Vikings Monday morning dump. Well, it's a little bit later, so maybe you're not taking a dump. Who knows, man. But uh, someone who has to step up tonight is Jordan Addison. Now, yeah, he's a rookie. Yes, he's been thrust into the spotlight as a wide receiver one, but lights aren't too bright for Addison. Like He craves attention. He loves the spotlight, and I'm not saying that as a bad thing. No, I think that's a very good thing. His first Monday night game, nationally televised, and against one of the best defenses in the league, and no Justin Jefferson, he is the guy, and he's got to win. I think uh, I think Addison puts on a show tonight. I think he goes uh, 11 for a buck 40 and a touchdown. Woo -woo. Let's go, man. Like need him to step up and be a hero uh, tonight. Also, <laughs> speaking of primetime football, what have we ever done? Like I, I when we get games like this in prime time that are unflexible, I, I feel like we've done something to piss off. You, know, you don't have to believe in, in God or a higher being or something, but I feel like karmically we as a society have failed, and this is this is our punishment. <laughs> so Sunday Night Football is going to be the Bears and Tyson Badgen against the, the, the low-energy Chargers, who, what, I mean, the Chargers are probably the, the worst good team or the best bad team. I don't know what it is, and frankly, the Vikings should not have lost to the Chargers, but... Uh, it is what it is in that spot. Hawkinson dropped that one at the end. And uh, how'd you like be TJ Hawkinson? Like you, you signed the largest, uh, with incentives, the largest tight end contract in NFL history. And you have two mitts on the football for the game winning touchdown. And all fans want to talk about is like, Oh, Kirk cousins should have clocked it. Great. Right. But uh, this is going to be a disaster uh, on national television, but everyone is still going to watch because what else are you going to do? Watch 60 minutes. Nah, 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 nah. Uh, speaking of Sunday Night Football, so, well, first off, like, the refs had themselves a bad week uh, overall. Uh, so, at the end of the uh, of the Colts-Browns game, the Browns basically got led into the end zone, uh, as well as at the end of the Steelers and the Rams game. I mean, Kenny Pickett was, like, two yards short, and they gave it to him. But also, also a couple of calls in the Chiefs game, of course, which is standard. And, of course, the Vikings are going to get boned tonight in officiating. It is what it is. But, I mean... This was pretty blatant. So the the Dolphins and the Eagles on Sunday Night Football. Dolphins got flagged 10 penalties for 70 yards, including taking a Tyreek Hill touchdown off the board. And the Eagles got called for zero goose egg. D'Angelo Russell penalties, which I know what you're saying. Sometimes things can be one-sided, but and mistakes can be made because officials are human. But when all the mistakes go in one direction, things that make you go, hmm. Especially on fourth down when Bradbury just completely grabbed onto uh, I think Wilson's face mask there. Uh, but, you know, missed holds all over the place. It was just ridiculous. Now, was Philly the better team last night? Yes. But did the, the officiating help them cover the three points? So, certainly. Mm. Uh, but also, something come out of this is that I hate the Eagles. I I've had a poopy day, and I hate the freaking Eagles, man. Also, screw Eagles fans right in the face. But these uniforms. Mm. Adios, mio. I mean, they're so damn good. I mean, th this reminds you of the you know, Randall Cunningham before he became a Vikings legend. Uh, this makes you think of like Harold Carmichael and Jerome Brown, rest in power, and Reggie White, rest in power. I mean, <laughs> Seth Joyner, let's go. Let's go. I mean, these uniforms are. Mwah. Need, these need to be their full-time uniforms. Like, I, I thought, like, the dark green during, like, the McNabb era was fine, but these, baby. Also, I, I actually do like Jalen Hurts, and plus hit him always rocking the Jordan 11s. Let's go. Let's go, man. And, and from that game, too. So, the Eagles were 4-4 four for four on the tush-push slash brotherly shove. And also, they picked this up. So, uh, this is a drive where they picked up two fourth downs with the brotherly shove. This is, like, a yard and a half. <laughs> And, and they still picked it up. And I thought the Dolphins had a good strategy for it. So they had three down defensive linemen pinching uh, uh, in the A-gaps. And also they had a ton of backup. And it it just didn't matter. And, and I, I've gone back and forth on this. Uh, one, I, I think the league is going to address it this offseason. They didn't last offseason. I, I think they'll make a rule where 
the primary, the, the person who takes a snap, who the person who takes the direct snap. So it can be a quarterback or running back and wildcat. They can't be pushed. I, I think that's what the rule is going to become. But yeah, if you hand off to a running back, they can be pushed sort of deal. Uh, but also, you see uh, around the league, like so many teams just fail at this. And the Eagles are very good at it because the Eagles, respect, have one of the best O-lines in the game. Uh, Kelsey's a monster. Dickinson's a monster. Uh, as well as, I mean, do you know Jalen Hurts can uh, squat 600 pounds? Weird. Weird. All right. So, yeah, the Eagles are just better at it than everyone. Uh, but I, I think the change is going to come because it basically is unstoppable. I mean, the Eagles, it's not first and ten. It's first and eight. <laughs> because, I mean, they cover like a yard and a half. Like, How, how do you – well, the, there is a way for defenses to stop it. But I don't think the league is going to like what happens because basically, especially down the goal line, I mean, if you're a linebacker or a safety, go Palomalu. Like, jump over the top. Uh, like, uh, there's a clip of like some high school team stopped it where uh, if you get called off sides, whatever. I mean, they, they move the ball forward a couple inches and then you're good to go. Again, not fourth and one out in the field, but fourth and goal. Uh, and that, that's how you stop it. Like, you're going to have to have your defensive lineman dive and slant at ankles and knees of the offensive lineman. You're going to have to send some guys over the top and try to hit the quarterback right in the head. And that's, uh, again, that's dirty, but that's the only way that you're going to stop this play. And that's the way that the league will outlaw it and they'll cite player safety. Uh, that's what's going to happen, man. Uh, also, something that's happening is woo, woo, Packers losing three in a row. No big deal. No, no big deal. It's going to be four in a row since uh, the Vi- uh, the Vikings head up uh, to face the uh, Greasy Grammy Green Bay Packers uh, on Sunday. Daniel Hunter's golden birthday, by the way. Happy 29th. Uh, but, hey, remember when, when the Packers beat the Bears week two, barely lost to the Falcons, uh, and then you know, beat the Sa- Saints at home? Everyone was saying that Jordan Love was going to be the next big thing, but it turns out love stinks. Yeah, yeah. That's right, man. Things you hate to see, that. And also things, oh, this whole Marianne Doe thing, it's become it's become so interesting to me because I actually do feel like, I actually do feel like she is a paid plant, but the league got exposed, and now they're just trying to backfill a backstory and just try and be like, oh, there's nothing to see here. Enjoy your bread and circuses, All right? Because, so first off, yeah, the story is that Marianne Doe's from Minnesota. She was a Vikings fan, moved out to L.A., uh, got married, uh, and became a Chargers fan, which yeah, is perfectly fine, perfectly acceptable, right? Uh, but I don't know. Something, something about it still stinks, man, because who gets this excited about Chargers football? <laughs> uh, but she did make the trip to Arrowhead, and she's been a mini, mini celebrity. I wonder if that's her kid. He's looking good in, like, the Kirko chains, which, uh, again, the Vikings always come up with great ideas, and then other teams just steal them. There you go. But also, go even deeper. I don't know if that's the same person. I don't – like, the same person from the top uh, from the top two pictures, are, are, that's the same person. But the person on the bottom, I don't know, man. I don't know. Again, th- this is a great conspiracy theory, and also, uh, is she – uh, is this topic overplayed a little bit, but also keeps us from talking about Taylor Swift. So in Taylor Swift news, uh, again, I will only talk about this. Uh, mm, I will only talk about this in the context of her poo-pooing on the Vikings. That, that, that's it, man. Uh, so Taylor Swift uh, with a new BFF, uh, the annoying Mahomes wife uh, at the Chargers and the Chiefs game. Congratulations, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Kelsey going off. Awesome. Cool stuff. But what's interesting to me, so – the first game that she went to was uh, the Bears game, where the you know, the Chiefs beat the piss out of crooked Chicago Bears, forty-one to ten. Like that was the first game, big to do, big ratings, even though, and it was it was in the late window too, so people were just watching this blow for Taylor Swift, right? And then she went to New York uh, and watched the Chiefs somehow beat beat the Jets, twenty-three to twenty, cool, and then she skipped the Vikings game, where the refs. Greatly aided the Chiefs winning that game. Hmm. And then she went to the the Broncos and the Chargers game, both at Arrowhead, right? So it's not even that she she doesn't go to road games, which is clear from the Jets game, right? And she's probably going to go to the Denver game, and she's probably going to go to Germany for the, the Chiefs and Dolphins game in Week 9. So I want this to be a thing where the only game she skipped was the Vikings game. 
because Taylor Swift hates Minnesota. I, I understand that the Swifties will be like, hey, no, no, Taylor loves us. That's why she did Ares tour, tour here for two, for two days over the weekend. She did it for the money, money, money. That's right. I'm just going to roll this narrative. Taylor Swift hates the Vikings. She hates Minnesota. That's all. You're on your own, kid. You always have been. Uh, but cleansing the palate. So two Jerome touchdowns. Ah, it was beautiful, man. So Jerome Baker, who thrived under Brian Flores. He's a guy that I would love here in purple eventually, uh, especially if Flores stays. But Jerome Baker uh, with the pick six uh, against the Eagles. Now, this is right after that horrific non-call where Bradbury had the face mask of the wide receiver. But uh, a slot corner blitz deflected. Jerome Baker ran it in. It was great. Yeah, true Jerome. Real Jerome right there. Also, Jerome Ford uh, had himself a long-ass touchdown run uh, against the Colts. Now, it's unfortunate because, uh, of course, he got injured. High ankle sprain. Could be out for a while. But Jerome Ford, of course, is on my fantasy team. I, I like. I had, I had to have him, right? Uh, he was actually my fourth-round pick. Actually, no. But after Chubb got hurt, I just like, I, I, I can't help myself. I have to, man. That's right. Uh, just like I have to, I, I can't help it that the Vikings are just going to win tonight. I got a good feeling. I, I feel I got a good feeling. Three and four want some more. The best three and four team in NFL history getting it done tonight. U.S. Bank Stadium, loud and proud. Blow the doors off the roof. Woo woo. We after Brock Purdy's ass. We after that ass, Purdy. That's right. That's right, man. Uh, but that's it. Vikings news up for a Monday. Skull production value. <laughs>